Praise the Lord. As we prepare to receive the servant of God, there's a word that the Holy Ghost has just dropped in my heart. And I want just to share with someone because I know any time the word of God comes our way, there is a, a purpose for that word. Hebrews chapter number 11, um, beginning from verse number 23, we can see the standing kiss of this mighty man of God, Moses. And I want to tell you, still your life is a standing kiss. There is something that is being written. There is something that people have not seen about your life. You may not understand it now, but I want to tell you the truth is that there is something that is being prepared from your life. Now, this is what the Word of God says. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was eaten through uh, three months, by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. He was an unbeautiful child. And they were not afraid of the king's command. Amen? Now, we can see sometimes we blame our past so very much. But I want to tell you, a person, a man or a woman with a destiny, you don't walk through the normal processes of life. You may come when things are not good at all. Moses came when his life was in danger. But I want to tell you, if you have a destiny and something uh, is being prepared from your life, no matter what you are, you go through, the process that you go through, at the end of it, your exit will be glorious. I said your exit will be glorious. So Moses was born, and he was born, you understood when all the male children were being killed. But I thank God because of the courage. Somebody say courage. Courage that uh, his parents held that time. They were so courageous that they risked. They said, no, he cannot die. This one, no, 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 no. They, 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 they just became so bold enough to hide him for three months. So there is nothing that will ever manifest, especially great things uh, for the bold people. I send great lives, great things, great victories are for the bold people. And I pray may the Lord give you the spirit of boldness in Jesus' mighty name. I said we have not received the spirit of timidity. We have received the spirit of boldness. So what you require so that you can go to the next level, it is just the courage and the boldness to go through that or to uh, challenge what is challenging your life. Now, verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter by faith. So whenever you receive the spirit of faith, you turn to be something else. <laughs> I said whenever you receive the spirit of faith, you turn to be something else. You refuse minor and uh, offers that come from uh, some channels of life and you embrace some things. You may People may see you as if you are very foolish, but with the time God proves that you got it right. So, when he became of age, this is maturity. So, we should attain maturity even when it comes to faith. I said we should attain maturity when it comes to our faith in God. Our journey uh, with our God, we require to be mature. It is only uh, when you attain uh, the level of maturity, God will begin to take you through some unusual parts of life. Everything that is glorious and great cannot be revealed until you attain your age. I said until you attain your age. There are some things you cannot release to children. That is why Galatians 4 and verse number 1, the Bible says as long as the heir is the child, he has no difference from the slave. So, as we prepare to receive the word of God in the altar, verse 25 says, choosing rather to suffer affliction. Not many are willing to suffer affliction. Not many are willing to live what they have already seen and it is good. They leave what is readily available to something that they don't see. But Moses made this uh, crazy step because he was able to see the invisible. Praise the Lord. He was able to see 
the invisible. So this is what made him to choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. I pray that we will be willing to pay the price. He was ready to suffer affliction. He was ready to suffer affliction. He was ready to go through the process. And let me tell you, some processes that God takes us, they are not good. They are not enjoyable. But when you go through and you still have faith at the end, you are qualified for the glory. And that's why the one says that the glory that is kept for us cannot be compared by the sufferings that we are going through now. So I want to tell you there is a glory that is ahead of us. I say there is a glorious life ahead of you. Amen. There is something glorious. Just, just be bold enough. Be bold enough to go through that trial. Be bold enough to go through those kind of afflictions. Be bold enough. Even to be given some names. I said even to be given some names by people because they can say that she has become man. He has become man. But I want to tell you, if you will be bold and you are ready to suffer affliction, the Lord will uphold you. God does not uphold everybody. He does not. He upholds those that are willing to trust him, trust in God that if God will be glorified, then who am I to say no? Lift up your hands. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? comes in the altar. It was the will of God for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go through the fire. It was the will of God for Daniel to go through the den of lions. It was the will of God for the children of Israel to go through the wilderness. Come on, some things that we are resisting through prayer and we are binding them and we are scattering them. Some of those things are the will of God. We say yes to your will. Have your way and take control in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, help us because you are our helper. Help us not to crash. Help us not to break during the process. We give you glory and praise. Thank you for your servant, Lord. Use him as your vessel of honor to speak your will today for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Let us put our hands together as we receive the word of God in the altar. Hallelujah. Celebrate the Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands again and tell God to speak to you now. It's time to hear the word. It's time uh, to enjoy uh, what the Lord has prepared for us this time. It's a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. So this is a wonderful day the Lord has given unto us. God bless you and do you good. I want to continue with the teachings, being fruitful or being useful in the kingdom of God, or for you to have, to hand value in his kingdom. What are you supposed to be as a believer? Because we are created and saved for that very purpose. I say there is a process that God takes us through so that we can be fruitful. If we avoid it, we shall never be fruitful. If we can avoid the process, we will never be fruitful. But when we follow the process of God, we shall be fruitful. 
So many of us are in the process and they end up aborting their greatness or aborting their destiny. For today, I want to emphasize on the book of John chapter 15. And verse 1 says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. And verse 2 says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruits. So you cannot reach the level of bearing more fruits until you are pruned. So pruning, pruning is very important uh, to God. It's very important. There are some things that are supposed to be taken out of you so that you can be what God wants you to be, so that he can use you the way he wants. So there is bearing fruit, and number two now, there is bearing more fruit. Nobody can bear more fruit until they are pruned. So your usefulness here depends on your willingness to be pruned. If you're willing to be pruned, you will bear more fruit. Now listen to this. We said that God will always honest us uh, by his spirit. But he will prune us. He will uh, bring us to himself, capture us by his love, earnest us or own us together by spirit, and then prunes us by his word. So it is the word that prunes. So it is the word that shows if really we are ready for being used by God or not. If you are not ready to obey the word and follow the word, then it means you are not ready to bear fruit. So your usefulness is determined by your willingness to be pruned. That means to obey the word of God. There are some things that the word of God deletes in your life and imposes other things into you. There are things that are uploaded in your life by the word. And there are things that are pruned out of your life or deleted out of your life by the word. The word comes to destroy the prong of your mind. And then give you another program. Because we live, our life is programmed. So we live according to the program that we have received. So the word comes to give us a new program. That's why the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it is the word of God that comes to renew us. Give us another mind, another state of thinking. And when you are, you are able to change your thinking, then you are able to move in line with his will. And then you can be useful. No man can be useful away from the word of God. No man has power as a natural being to create impact in the kingdom of God. Until he is transformed by the power of his word, he is not useful to God. Natural men, as they look, they, have no, they are not useful to God. God can do very little with a natural man. I say again, if there is something God can do, it's very little with a natural man. That's why the Bible says a natural man or a carnal man cannot please God. Why? He cannot submit to his laws. He cannot be obedient. So he will rebel. When God says do this, you will not do because naturally... You don't have that stability to obey God. Indeed, the Bible says, indeed, they cannot submit to the will of God. So if you cannot submit to the will of God, you are not useful to God. Because God uses you within the context of his will. God is determined to fulfill his purpose. So God is after fulfilling his purpose. And if we cannot be aligned with the purpose of God, we shall be frustrated in life. Until you know what God wants with you, you live a frustrated life. The first thing that you can do to yourself is to discover what is the will of God for your life. And where can you discover this? In the word of God. It is God who can show you what he wants you to be through his word. It's by the revelation of the spirit. It is by the understanding of the word of God that you know this is who I am and this is what God wants with me. If you don't 
understand what God wants with you, you won't be held and hung on the wrong life. My wife quoted something in Hebrews about Moses. Hebrews 11, we read from verse 24, going downward. You will understand the story of Moses. And Moses, one of the things is that when he came of age, he understood that he was not an Egyptian. He was an Hebrew. And when he understand that, that revelation is what changed the life of Moses. Hello? If you understand now, by the word of God, who you are, that enables you to take a step that will change your life. Not unless you understand, then there are things you cannot do. That is why I say revelation is the mother of revolution. You cannot have a revolution until you have revelation. You can't. Revelation is the key thing for any believer. Your light, your, the, the, your eyes must be flooded with light. You begin to understand what is the will of God for me? What is the will of God for my life? You get it by revelation. And when you get it by revelation, you align yourself with the will of God. You will never be fulfilled and live a life to the fullest until you know who you are in the Lord. You may understand yourself naturally. You may know who you are naturally. But if you don't know who you are, as far as God is concerned, sometimes God will speak to you make excuses. Jeremiah never knew who he was. But that's why he said, God, I, I am a young man. So I cannot do what you want me to do. God said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I consecrated you a prophet. To the nations. So you are called already to the nations. As young as you are, you have, you have a purpose in me. And this is the time now the man began to understand that I have a mission to accomplish here on earth. I say this, when we love God, his will becomes our mission in life.